When I was a kid, all I used to do is I used to just take everything apart and see how it worked and why it worked. I guess that's, that's something which has always sort of been an interest, a, interest of mine, really. The idea is just to, just to see how fast I can go. Like I said, I like, like to win races. The success of crossing the line. What I love about engineering is you start off with an idea, gives you the skills that you need to take that through to completion. I lo love training hard. It gives me a sense of satisfaction and, and achievement, a sense of purpose. In 2013, I saw a video, a Dutch team had uh, just broken the land speed record for fastest human powered vehicle at 83 miles an hour, and it didn't look anything like a bicycle. I wanted to find out more, how does that work, how, how, how is that even possible? We were the first UK university to attempt this record, so we've got five miles and we've got to go as fast as we can in that five miles, and whoever goes the fastest wins. It was very clear from the beginning that there was a real challenge ahead of us. We launched a nationwide campaign to find two male riders and we design tests to push these athletes to their limit. The fitness tests were brutal. It's a step test. They start you off at a set wattage. It increases by 25 watts per minute and you keep going until you can't go anymore. Yeah, the, the fitness trials were one of the hardest things I've, I've ever done physically. They gave results which were just way above anyone that we had tested before and at that point we knew we've got the right engine, we've got the right people for the job. We just need, now need to build a bike that can go really fast. The University of Liverpool give us fantastic support and access to great facilities. Our bike needed to cut through the air. On an upright bicycle you're struggling to keep up to 30 miles an hour and we're aiming for 83 miles an hour. That's, a, you know, that's so much faster. We had to use a camera system so that our rider could see where they're going. You imagine driving a car at 80 miles an hour by just having your phone screen to look through. Well, this wasn't going to be just like stepping on their normal road cycle. From an endurance sport, an endurance background, and then we're suddenly being thrust into this kind of all-out power. So very different. I had to completely change my training uh, for this race. Normally I'd be preparing for a three or four hour race, but this is actually a six minute effort. If you had a normal bicycle transmission inside there, you really, really wouldn't go very fast. So we need something that's beefier and bigger uh, in order to allow us to go um, as fast as we need to go. It really, really became my life. I couldn't get the project out of my head. I used to sleep with a notepad on my bedside table because I would wake up in the middle of the night and go, what if we tried this? Time for us to do this really was now. Go out there and see what this bicycle can really do. Seeing the bike perform for the first time um, it was extremely emotional for the whole team. When we first saw the bike perform, we realised that it was really, really quick. Well, I thought it was a world beater. Um, it was just about putting it together when we got there into Battle Mountain. Riders were just itching to go faster. They just wanted to go to the next gear and they wanted to go to the next gear. But we had to stop and we had to say, well, now it's the time to go to the United States and see what, how fast we can really go. It's getting a big flight case that looks more like a small caravan over into the Nevada desert is quite a complicated operation. So we needed someone who has done this before and knows what they're doing. We approached INEOS, who decided to sponsor the project, and they gave us phenomenal support. They took charge of getting the team out to America and getting the bicycle over to the States, and we really couldn't have done it without them. I didn't really feel nervous until I started my warm-up and until the lid goes on and you get taped up and sealed in. Three. And you get the countdown Two. for uh, launching down the course. One. So it doesn't really sink in what you're actually doing. Ken hits 59 miles an hour. There was just this really sort of happy mood and everyone was really, really excited to what was going to come. And then, unfortunately, the weather turned. It was really frustrating. No one had planned for it. So at this stage, we had fewer and fewer attempts remaining. We wanted 70 miles an hour. We wanted the British records. So we raced Ken. I told the guys, I think I've done 70. Everyone was so happy. Uh, Ken was ecstatic. We had something to bring back, uh, bring back home with us. We had a you know, British land speed record. At the same time, a team from 
Canada upped the world record. This changed everything. We really had to up our game. So we decided that that was the time. If we wanted it, we needed to get it now. So we put all of our effort into this one attempt. Uh, it wasn't, the wind wasn't above uh, what we deem as unsafe. Ken gets up to about 55 miles an hour. I knew that we were running out of attempts. I knew that we'd gone quick, but not quick enough. A gust of wind came out of nowhere. And then unfortunately, Ken hit a bump in the road. I was in the vehicle following closely behind him and I, I saw the bike go off the road and it's, well, it was, a, it was a really bad crash. We sometimes remember what we're trying to do is, is it, there is a danger to it. You know, you're trying to go fast inside one of these, one of these vehicles and um, it, was, it, was, it was horrible, it was horrible to watch. Think about what a, what a car crash would look like at 50 miles an hour. You'd almost write off your car doing that. At that point, we just didn't care about the bike. We just wanted to know that Ken was okay. When we designed the bike, we built it as a big protective bubble. We all experience the same problems. We all experience problems with stability. The worst possible thing which we can have is someone gets injured doing what we want to do. I vividly remember walking over to Ken, and I said to Ken, Ken, if you want to stop, if you don't want to do this anymore, that's completely fine. And Ken's response to me was, I need to go to bed um, because we'll be racing in the morning. The crash was scary, and it's hard to get back on the bike after a big crash like that but I've committed so much to this project and I've worked so hard for it for so long that you, you can't chicken out at that point. The damage to the bike meant the world record was just out of our reach this time. We, we didn't come all this way to just give up. The team worked through the night to get the bike fixed and by that time we only had a few attempts left. Dave went inside and what was a broken bicycle almost. I remember just saying to the guys, "I've gone to the bike. You know, I'm really going to be for this." We were very nervous, and then all of a sudden, Dave started to put the power down. Dave went through the timing gates, and we heard over the radio that Dave's just hit 70 miles an hour. Dave broke Ken's uh, British Land Speed record, so now Dave is the fastest man in the UK. You know, minutes later, it was Ken's run. Someone said to Ken, Dave, "Dave's just broke a record. Dave's just got 70 miles an hour." And Ken, as he got in, he, he just says, I'm not having that. So when I was sitting there um, in the bike on the start line, being sealed in, sort of had a moment to myself where I was like, you've just got to do it now. This is it. So we launched him off and he was going faster and faster and faster. I had to push as hard as I can for that last mile. Re really gave it everything. We hear over the radio that Ken's just hit 75 miles an hour. We broke our British record again. You know, so we broke it three times. Yeah! yeah! We didn't get the world record this year, we're going to be back. I, I just love that we've done it, um, got a British record, and one day if we could bring the world record back to Britain, that would be incredible. We've recently begun building the next bike, the Ariane 2. It's British cycling and British engineering. Those two things just go so hand in hand together. We're great at doing this kind of stuff, so we need to start showing it. We want that world record, of course we want the world record. No, but you want it. I want it, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I absolutely want it.